Hi everyone and welcome to today's General Hospital Recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps. I have super exciting news for you. I'm, I'm going to cut to the chase with it though. And that is William DeVry, aka Julian Jerome of General Hospital, is an official supporter and contributor of our Indiegogo campaign. Uh, it happened last night. We tweeted him. He direct messaged us back. We had this um, this nice conversation, gave him our information, and he is now tweeting uh, not only support, but he's encouraging people to donate. And because of him, we are now over $1,200. Um, we have over $1,200 in our Indiegogo campaign. Uh, so yesterday when I woke up we had 45, today when I woke up we had um, 1,080 and it's just been going up throughout the day and I am just so so thankful. So um, if you want to join in on that fun, uh, go check out our Twitter, we've been retweeting a bunch of things he's been tweeting and go follow him on Twitter as well, it's just... Oh my god, it's so exciting. We we okay, I don't wanna I don't wanna take up the whole video with this, but just oh my goodness, I've been talking to William Devry for like two days now. Well, yesterday and then early this morning to thank him again. Um but so yeah, really exciting, but I will get on with the video now because Ah, okay. <laughs> Morgan and Kiki. So first of all, I have a bikini top very similar to that. Actually it's the top I wore in like a few videos the other week. Uh, if you saw the one with like the strap that is a uh, American flag bikini top. And Morgan is really distracted by Franco and Denise and Kiki wonders why and why does he care so much? Why does he care so much about Franco and Denise? Hmm, I wonder why too. So Morgan and Kiki talk about Carly and Franco's relationship and Morgan gets really sensitive when he thinks that she might be defending what Franco did. And then Kiki says that if he were cheating on her, like she would, not that she would do the same thing, but she would be like really upset at, or something to that effect. And Morgan is like, why would I ever cheat on you? You're so beautiful and smart and sexy and da 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 da. And I'm like, dude, you, you did cheat on her twice already. Like, you're being way too overcompensating. And then uh, after sleeping together and taking a shower, because we go to zero to a hundred in like five seconds, um, uh, he heads off. Uh, she heads off to Kelly's to pick up some food, and they're going to meet in the park for the fireworks. At the hospital, uh, checks versus X's, where do you stand? Like, if you're marking a box, do you put an X or do you put a check? I'm curious. I don't really have a preference, but I think I tend to check boxes. Anyway, Obrick works really hard to rationalize herself taking lunch early and that it will inspire others to try to take her job so she knows who to weed out for promotions. Okay. And then Franco tells Obrecht that he and Denise are dating. And then Obrecht kind of tears Denise apart and calls her a low rent version of Ava. And Franco tells her that it's all an elaborate ruse. So then he talk he talks to Obrecht about how much it surprised him that Denise went along with his lie about dating. And Franco is doubting that Denise's reasoning for going along with it is her actual reasoning for going along with it. And then Franco thinks it has to do with Morgan Corinthos and Obrecht agrees. And I'm like, ding, ding, ding. And then Obrecht says that perhaps Denise is involved with Morgan. So then Obrecht asks Franco why he cares so much about Denise's motive motives as long as it's helping him and he said it's not so much for me it's about Kiki like I don't want Kiki to get her and I'm like you go Franco you ever have your hair go flat like in the middle of a video so anyway at Sunny's Denise shows up and she asks Sunny if she can see Avery and then Sunny agrees to let her in but I'm wary so then he wants to talk to Denise about Morgan that makes more sense now. So Sunny straight up asks her what she thinks she's doing, almost screwing his kid. Awkward. And once uh, she's, oh, once she is sure Sunny's, oh, once Sunny's sure she's no longer interested in Morgan, she tells him that she's seeing Franco. That did not, s I don't know what I wrote. But anyway, she tells Sunny she's seeing Franco. So after a long conversation about all of that. Uh, Sunny tells Denise that she can't see the baby because she's dating Franco. And two, he doesn't trust her as far as he could throw her and he's going to have her thrown out of his house. So there you go, right? What I thought would happen. So then Denise goes to, I guess, visit Kiki and Morgan opens the door in a towel, well, like a blanket. So 
go go figure for tomorrow, right? At the quarter mains, Jake wants to get started right away, taking the company back from Nicholas. And Jake wants to keep this plan between um, him and Michael because the less people to know that know, the less chance there is of Nicholas figuring out that they're coming for him. And then Michael and Jake talk about loyalty and honor. And Michael tells Jake that his uncle Jason taught him everything. Um, he needs to know about honor and loyalty and stuff like that. And he says that uh, Jake sounds just like his uncle Jason. And I'm crying. And then they have this huge in-depth talk about Jason. And I'm crying again. So then Michael and Jason uh, talk about <laughs> the shares and how they're like bonds. So whoever holds them owns them. And Michael's like, yeah, but there's no way for to get our for us to get our hands on Nicholas's. And Jake goes, well, maybe there is. So Jake gets this idea that they're going to dig up a secret about Nicholas and use it against him. And that's how they'll get the shares back. Little does he know he is the secret. So then Michael warns him about seeking revenge, but says that if he does find any secrets about Nicholas, that he has Michael's permission to do use that information however he wants. And I hope he does. I hope he uses it to the fullest extent. Uh, and then Michael calls to warn Sonny that Denise might stop by. And I'm like, oh, you're like a whole episode late, Michael. At Kelly's, uh, Nicholas, uh, they, I can't read. So really, Nicholas, there's people not happy with what you did to ELQ. Go figure. Uh, no appearance on Good Morning America is going to put you back in people's good graces. And Nicholas is finishing up his call with Rosalie, and Sam is right there. And Sam doesn't want to talk to him, and he is so offended. He's like, what, you won't even talk to me? And she's like, why would I give you the time of day after what you did to the quarter mains? So then Nicholas is kind of upset that Sam is... Uh, doesn't want to talk to him and tells her how Helena and Victor were bleeding the Cassadines dry. And she's like, oh, so it's all about the money to you? And she, uh, he's like, we're family, and I know you consider Michael family, but look who's in front of you. And she's like, no. And then she tells, um, and then she tells him that she doesn't like who's standing right in front of her, and she doesn't like who he's become. So, um, the question, so... <laughs> Nicholas questions why she cares so much about the quarter mains and if she cares so much then why did she give up her shares of ELQ and she says it's because she didn't want to get in between Tracy and AJ at the time and then she tells Nicholas uh, that if Jason were around he would kick his ass and I agree and Sam, so Sam after they argue about how much Jason resented his family Sam says that if he were alive you know he would come after you uh, and Nicholas says, well, I guess I'm lucky he's not alive. And I'm like, really? Like, that is a cold thing to say when you're talking to the person who, like, that's, that's her husband that has passed away. Oh, then I'm lucky he's not alive. Like, really? That's a jerk move. Like, to say, yeah. So then Sam calls him out on it. And uh, she's like, how dare you say that to me? Like, she is, she is livid. So then, um... They they part ways after Nicholas is offended and Sam is just like, ugh. So then Franco runs into Kiki at Kelly's and tells her that being with Morgan on the 4th of July might not be a good idea. And then Sam gets a phone call from Patrick and it sounds like he has two surgeries to do on the 4th of July. Oh, by the way, today's the 4th of July on General Hospital. And so Sam is on the phone with Patrick and she says how she wishes there was something she could do about Nicholas, what Nicholas did to Michael. And Jay comes up to her and goes, well, maybe there is and I'm like yes maybe there is work together fall in love oh my goodness I, I'm serious it would be amazing if the two of them fell in love like before he knew who he is and like he dumped Elizabeth for her anyway and like anything for Elizabeth's world to blow up right now because what she's doing is inexcusable but Let's get to, like, the big arky storyline. Luke, Laura, Lulu, Dylan, and Holly. Uh, so Luke and the crew are examining the photo for clues, and Luke notices that Ethan's hands, like, he's doing a certain thing with his hands. And then they realize that Lucky is also doing a certain thing with his hands. So they, came, they come up with, like, what signs they used to use for stuff. So they come up with three Jackson. And Lulu looks up the address, and there's a warehouse at 3 Jackson Road, very close to where they are. 
So now they're at the warehouse, and there's a lot of gunmen, so they're trying to figure out a way to get in there while circumventing the gunmen so there will be little casualties as possible, and Lulu says that she has an idea. And uh, initially we don't know what the idea is, but we know that Laura is definitely opposed to it because she's like, no. Uh, so Lulu and Dylan are going to make a distraction because they figure the guards don't know who they are and aren't expecting them. So they're not really a threat, but the guards would know who Luke and Laura are, so they're going to be the distraction while Luke, Laura, and Holly go to get Ethan and Lucky. So then Dylan and Lulu knock on the door, and Lulu has this, like, fake pregnancy belly, and she's pretending to go into labor, and they're asking the henchmen for help. So as one of the henchmen agrees to drive them to the hospital, Lulu gets nervous about the gun, and Dylan asks the guy to leave his gun behind. You know, your friend can watch your gun for you. So then Luke and Laura, after the now unarmed gunmen, like, leave with Dylan and um, Lulu, uh, Luke and Laura come in and go, oh my goodness, was it, uh, did a young woman just come through here, uh, very pregnant, and the guy's like, yeah, and they go, oh, that's my daughter, and then they hold a gun up to him, and then Holly comes around and has a gun right up to his head. So they agreed to all split up, uh, Luke, Laura, and Holly, uh, but there's a door right there, and I think they could all just open the door and look what it's, uh, what's inside before they split up, but they decide not to do that, and so Laura and Holly go elsewhere, and Luke opens the, opens the door, and he goes, I'll be damned. So, we'll find out tomorrow what's behind the door. Is it Lucky and Ethan, or is it still too early in the storyline to know, but it is the middle of the July, and I believe Anthony Geary, his last episodes do air in July, so... We're getting there. Um, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to check out our Indiegogo campaign, the link is right in the description. Um, so exciting. Uh, I will see you tomorrow for more General Hospital. I hope you have a great day. Bye.